think twice the next time you start thinking, oh, I've got chest pain, I've got a problem, I've got occlusion, I've got the doc did an angiogram, I've got something in there, let's go in there and clean it out. So here we are, another beautiful day in the United States, great place to live. And let me see, how many stress tests will be done today? Oh, let's say 5 million per year divided by 365, which is actually a low number because doctors don't usually do stress tests on Saturday and Sunday. So we ought to no multiply this number times 7 over 5. Let me, okay, 5 million divided by 365 equals 13,700, 698,000. Let's divide by 5 and multiply by 7. About 20,000 more stress tests done today. And guess what? That's, um, those stress tests are basically going to be positive if you, if you have over 50% blockage. And guess what? 68% of heart attacks occur in people with less than 50% occlusion of the coronary arteries. So I may sound facetious, but I'm dead serious about this issue. We have way too many stress tests going on. I'm not the only one tell saying this. Look at the, um, the foundation for internal medicine, cardiology. They're all trying to say there are too many stress tests being done out there. I did a video recently. Well, then why do we continue to do stress tests? You know, some people would, are very skeptical and, you know, like to beat on doctors and cardiologists and say, well, we do them so the doctor can do a stent. I think that's a little bit... I don't think that's entirely true. Stress tests and stents have somewhat of a component similar to antibiotics in that the patient knows that I got something going on and if it's chest pain, if you put a tube in there, I'm going to be fixed. You get a positive stress test. This is where you go next. You go into the cath lab. They stick a needle into your groin into the major artery where if you, you know, if you bleed, you can bleed out from there fairly quickly. We used to have more of that problem than we do these days, but it's still a problem. Back in 1958, Dr. Mason Soames at the Cleveland Clinic did the very first angiogram. It was a mistake. He was trying to, to look at something else and the dye backed up and he got he released the dye in a place where he wasn't expecting to, and he got a great picture of the arteries of the heart. The patient's heart stopped. This was a pediatric patient. He had a few difficult minutes, and then he, then he got the heart back. Now, many people would say that was a bad day, and it was somewhat. But then he thought about, wow, how could we use this? And use it we have. We've been using it over and over and over again. I did a video on this recently, and I'm just going to make a few comments about that video. I got several, uh, most of the comments were very positive. I got several people that were polite, but they added, you know, I just had a stent, and I feel a lot better. I got instant relief. Uh, that's not a surprise. That is not a surprise at all. Let me just talk about the study that, uh, first of all, this was in New York Times, gosh, what, a couple of years ago, and uh, just a couple of points. The devices are life-saving. Stents are life-saving when you have, a, you have a heart attack and you have blockage and they're able to, to clean that out, get beyond that with the stents. But sometimes patients just get stents when they have no pain at all. The doctor just sees a blockage. That happens a lot. In fact, if you look at those nine, uh, excuse me, five million stents per year that are being done, I believe that number is correct. It could be much higher. 
but let's say it's five. Let's say my information is correct on that. One tenth of them are done for the purpose that they actually help for. The other 90% are done for other reasons. But let me get back to reasons like heart attack prevention, angina, blockage, and the trials just don't support it. And let me, for those of you who have had a a positive stint. Let me just read this quote from from the uh, from that study. This is this was done. This is the Orbita trial done in uh, published in the Lancet. And again, symptomatic relief is the primary goal of percutaneous coronary intervention (PCI), a stent in stable angina, and is commonly observed clinically. So that means. A lot of times you will see significant improvement in your symptoms in the clinic. However, let's read the next sentence. However, there is no evidence from blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized trials to show its efficacy. So, again, just think about that study. I've mentioned that in the other video. They actually did blinded sham studies on these folks. And the people that came out felt just as good whether they had a stent or not. Now, nobody's calling a patient a liar when a, when a patient does get improvement. What we're just saying is, this is, uh, this is the information. And we're not, uh, here's the reason for providing this information. Think twice the next time you start thinking, oh, I've got chest pain, I've got a problem, I've got occlusion, I've got the doc did an angiogram, I've got something in there, let's go in there and clean it out. Hmm, please think twice. Thank you for your interest. If you're interested in a two-day boot camp type of environment where you get your CIMT, you get all your labs, and we spend two days going over the whole thing, check out our event. It's November 8th and 9th at Louisville. Great place to fly into in November at the University of Louisville.